Today's session will discuss viewpoints on modern culture and civilizations, meanings of civilizations, famous world civilizations, ingredients of Islamic civilizations, Western civilizations, and its laudable moral principles, Western civilization and moral dilemmas. comparative analysis of islamic and western civilizations and at the end we will discuss clash of civilization it is an international theory proposed by an american political scientist samuel huntington now start the discussion on all these points one by one the onslaught of the western civilization and going of islamic civilization on the back foot is not only injurious for muslims but it is a matter of great concern too as it has jeopardized or endangered even their very existence as the west's material development had overpowered the whole world the muslim world could also not remain immune or safe to its hazards as all the civilizations save islam were not strongly based they could not resist this and if there was some resistance it was limited merely to customs and tradition in the realm of beliefs no civilization had a strong enough basis to stand this deluge only the islamic civilization was too powerful and rational to counter it thus islam was the sore of their eyes and they considered it the biggest hurdle in the way of implementing their agenda then the book by samuel p huntington and titled clash of civilizations further elaborated the real shape or counters of the western civilizations the sons of west have obtruded or interfered upon the islamic civilization thus making the state of affairs unprecedentedly aggravated and worrisome on the question of embracing or renouncing the western civilization there are three schools of thought with varied opinions first group is of the view that we should completely yield to the western civilization and adopt it with all its pros and cons however their number is but trivial second group have the vox populi that the western civilization must be rejected completely such scholars are great in number in the traditional school of thought the third party or party is of a moderate view as they believe that we should adopt a pick and choose policy that is accepting the positive aspects and declining the negative ones moderate muslims mostly support the third view but the patterns of the western civilization neither want it nor do they think so they say that there would be no matter of pick and choose if you want to adopt it you have to get the complete package but the question is what should be a pragmatic or practical approach in these circumstances this is not only the burning and challenging question but is also important for the bright future of islam and to answer this question it is essential to know what the civilization actually is and what are the differences between the islamic civilization and western civilization according to the oxford dictionary civilization is the process by which a society or 
place reaches an advanced stage of social development and organization. Webster Dictionary defines civilization as the process of becoming civilized, meaning pleasant and comfortable. In archaeology lexicon, civilization is a particular society at a particular time and place. In Arabic, civilization is translated as tahzib, which means prune, clip, snip, meaning to make better. Pruning the trees is civilization. Renovating a room, putting the things in order and revivifying or encouraging it also means civilization or tahzeeb. The meaning got elaborated with the passage of time. And today the very word tahzeeb is used in terms of lifestyle, manners and other such phenomena. In literal sense, civilization is the fundamental philosophies and ideologies of a nation which forms the very basis of its actions. First of all, an ideology sprouts or grows in a man's brain and then it becomes foundation on which his thoughts and actions are based. For tahzeeb, an other word culture is also used in English language, which according to Oxford Dictionary means maintain in conditions suitable for growth. This meaning symbolizes brain as a soil, ideologies and beliefs as a seed and actions as as the yield harvested thereupon. This manifests or clears that the actions of people mirror their ideologies and beliefs. This is the very reason that there are elaborate differences in the lifestyles of a person who believes in oneness of Allah and an atheist. It is absolutely impossible that a person has some ideology and beliefs, but his actions go against them. In the beginning, there was only one human civilization. However, as the time passed by, the human race developed and nations were created. Then, with the mutual interaction, overwhelmed by a thirst or quest to influence other gave birth to various civilizations. Some of those are Indian civilization, Persian civilization, Greek civilization, Egyptian civilization, Hebrew civilization, Babylonian civilizations, Zoroastrian civilization, Arabic civilization, Jewish civilization, Chaldean civilization and Western civilization. A famous scholar defines the culture in these words. It is the system comprising all dimensions of thoughts, actions, morals and behavior that a man has adopted in his individual, family, social, economic and political realms of his life. Hence, it may be said that culture or civilization is a language for some principles to speak in the affairs of the world. The concept of good and bad civilization has been there since the beginning of life and the clash between these two is still. As Alama Iqbal has said, Stizai ka raha hai azal se ta imroz Charage Mustafvi se Sharare Bulahbi means struggle has continued from eternity till the present day between the lamp of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the spark of Bulahb. We can divide the famous world civilization in two categories pre Islamic and after the light of Islam. Pre Islamic civilizations are Persian civilizations, Greek, Egyptian and Arabs, the period of ignorance civilizations. After the Islam, the famous civilizations are the Islamic civilizations and the Western civilizations. To have an understanding of what Islam has contributed to the development and progress of humanity, here is a brief account of the pre-Islamic civilizations. 
Persian civilization was based on Zoroastrianism. Zoroaster was born nearly a thousand years before Jesus Christ or Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Some historians believe that his teachings were extremely close to nature. But the followers of Zoroaster transgressed the limits in so much that they started pyrolatry, that is worshipping fire. The fire worshippers covered their faces with some cloth while praying, so that the fire may not get unclean or polluted from their breeds. When they made the fire their god, they went astray from the nature's path. Their views can be abridged in a single example relating to their funereal rites. When a Zoroastrian dies, he is neither buried as they believe it contaminates the earth, nor he cremated or reduced to ashes because the fire will become polluted, rather he is hanged down in a deep well to be eaten by the vultures and kites. Though the Greek civilization was based on a religion, but in this religion there were thousands of gods. Poseidon was the god of seas, while Hephaestus was the god of fire and metal working and the sun was ruled by Apollo. They were the polytheists and believed in countless number of gods. They were socially divided as well. There is no denying the fact that social unity and coherence can be cultivated only if there is only one god to be believed in. The Greek civilization produced many philosophers per excellence among whom Aristotle warrants a special mention here. Following words is a glimpse of his great and philosophy. He said, if the citizens' number increases and the children become more, and if they are born prematurely, they should be killed. Similarly, a disabled child, a boy with bad morals, a weak man from whom no benefit can be derived, an ailing person who is unlikely to be cured, they all should be killed, because the sole objective is that the number of citizens of this ideal city must not be higher than of those who could be earnestly cared for. Cultural traditions of Greeks thus can be deduced from the ideas and thoughts of this great philosopher. There is a general consensus among historiographers that the world's oldest civilization is that of the Egyptians. This is the very place where the first light of civilization descended. In the ancient Egyptian civilization, the king was a god himself. Besides him, there were many other gods as well who controlled the lives of animals. Many were those who run the affairs of the humans while the proper functioning of the solar system was responsibility of an other group of gods. A glimpse of the religious practices of the Egyptian is manifested in the slaughtering of the children of Israel on the hands of Pharaoh that was the law of the land at that time. The Jahiliya civilization of Arabia was also founded on religion. Historically, it was based on the religion of Ibrahim salam, that is oneness of Allah. However, this tradition ebbed away and was gradually replaced by by a number of gods in so much that even in the holy Kaaba there were a lot of idols bearing one's daughters alive self-made system of lawful and prohibited defying the standards of Meyer and weight backing off the promises and denouncing the beliefs in the hereafter along with many other vices were part of their cultural tradition in so much that the Holy Quran narrated the state of affairs in these words. Zahar al-Fasadu fil barri wal bahir. Mischief has appeared on land and sea. 
the light of Islamic civilization disseminated or advertised across the globe with the prophethood of the Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. The foundation of Islamic civilization, unlike all other civilization, rested on the holy or sacred words. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his prophet. The Islamic civilization annihilated the idols of Jahiliya, Persian, Chaldean, Egyptian, Babylonian, Greek, Indian, Zoroastrian, Jewish and Christian civilizations. Belief in oneness of Allah made this civilization strong enough that Persian and Roman civilization could not hold water against this. Based on the divine revelation, Islamic civilization crushed all the civilization founded on obsolete customs and traditions. No civilization has such a substantial amalgamation of beliefs, practices and moral owing to which the Islamic civilization overpowered all others all others and they resultantly began dying out. Here the most pertinent question arises that Islamic civilization rooted Persian, Roman, Chaldean, Christian and Jewish civilizations. But when the Western civilization emerged, why the Islamic civilization was under threat? It is necessary to answer this question before we comprehend the actual status of Western civilization and grasp its basis. The Western civilization is devoid of coherent ideology whereas Islamic civilization making headways in the light of rational beliefs, practices and moral and the divine revelations. Since its evolution, the central point on which the Western civilization stands is the material progression only. Contrarily, Islamic civilization not only fulfills the material needs of man, it also helps foster the moral and spiritual aspects of his personality. This is the reason why the Western civilization is only producing skyscrapers of worldly advancement, whereas in spiritual and moral aspect it is at the verge of collapse as it is said in the Holy Quran Shafa Hufratim Minan Nar is on the brink or bank of the pit of fire. Iqbal has also rightly said Tumhari Tahzeeb apne khanjar se aap hi khud kushi karegi jo shaakh nazuk pe aashiyana banega na paaydar hoga Your civilization will commit suicide with its own dagger the nest built on the frail bow will not be durable Regarding the Western civilization, a philosopher writes, the Christians had created a dichotomy in religious and the worldly affairs. Religion had no effect on their worldly lives. Reveling and relishing had become the core objective of their lives. They did not care for the hereafter because they believed that Jesus was their savior as bearing the sins of the whole world as he was crucified. Hence, they had a carte blanche to do what they would have willed. Now, Adornment and ornamentation make the sole purpose of their life. Everyone, may it be a woman or a man, child or an old, is indulged in making over and beautifying oneself. Singing, dancing, merrymaking, reveling, racketing and jubilations are now the pillars of their culture. Because of unrestricted drinking alcohol and eating pork, nudity, wantonness, profligacy and licentiousness are 
rampant among them, remaining oblivious to and without caring for the spirituality and the hereafter, they are running blindly to meet their end. The Western culture is also based on religious beliefs. It sprouted from the belief that Jesus had already atoned for all the sins of the Christians by his crucifixion. So, relish and savor the life as much as you can. Some characteristics of the Western culture may be described as separation of religion and the worldly life, no care for the hereafter, belief in Trinity, permission to drink alcohol and eat pork. Jesus has atoned for the sins of all Christians. Eat, drink and be merry, the only purpose of life. Almost all civilization presented the same picture. There was no spiritual aspect. Rather, materialism was the only objective of life. The king of Rome, Persia and Egypt had court dancers for their recreation and entertainment. However, when the Arabs under the leadership of the Holy Prophet والسلام, embarked on an Islamic revolution, these could not withstand its rise and ultimately yielded to its might in so much that Caliph Harun al-Rashid once addressing a wisp of cloud said, Ayyuha sahaba amtiri haythu shi'ta fasayatini kharajik. O cloud, you may reign at any place you wish. I shall collect your khiraj, meaning land taxes. Belief in oneness of Allah, belief in prophethood, belief in hereafter, worships and moral principles are the characteristics on which the Islamic culture is based. Islamic culture is based on monotheism. It has been said in the Holy Quran, Surah Ikhlas, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu Samad, O Prophet, peace be upon him, say, He is Allah, the one and only. Allahu Samad, Allah, the eternal, absolute. Lam Jalid, Walam Julad. He has never had been offspring, nor is he begotten. Walam Yakullahu Kufuan Ahad. And there is none like unto him. Whereas in the Western culture, they have made wishes their gods and they worship the idols of lust and luxury. Allah has revealed the reality of such people in the Quran as Ara Aita Manitta Hada Ilahahu Hava. Do you see a person who has taken his own passion as his God? The people having a lifestyle imbued in the Western culture do not lead their lives in the light of divine revelation. Rather, they follow the path of shaitan as described in Surah Al-An'am. وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُوحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ But the evil ones ever inspire their friends. The second belief in the Islamic culture is the belief in the prophethood of the last holy prophet, peace be upon him, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Muslims aspire to lead their lives following the teachings of the holy prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, whereas the West is not ready to accept a single man as a source of inspiration and beacon of light of guidance. They want to decide everything on their so-called rationality while Muslims spend their lives as said by Iqbal Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh Aqle Besh Kun Ba Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam Surrender your wisdom before the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wa Sallam At another place Alama Iqbal says ب مصطفى برسان خیش را کے دین ہما اوست 
اگر بے او نر سیدی تمام بول بی اوست ٹو مستفا ریچ ٹو ہم بلونگ ڈیڈ If you did not reach him, you are Boo Lahab Kaleen. In an other inspiring verse, Iqbal says, Dar dil-e muslim maqam-e mustafa-ast, Aab ru-e maaz naam-e mustafa-ast. If the muslim's heart is the home of the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, all our glory is from the name of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The third belief in the Islamic culture is the belief in the hereafter that provides man with a complete system of reward and punishment. warning and cautionary promise and admonition whereas the western civilization is completely devoid of this belief if we analyze on the basis of belief the western civilization is founded on a life that prefers whims and wishes over allah's will rationality over prophethood and no belief in rewards and punishments over the belief in the hereafter it is evidently elaborate that in the ambit of beliefs the western culture has not infested the islamic culture this is because these beliefs came into being much before the emergence of the western civilization these are not the creation of today's world rather they have a very distant origin in history and the Holy Quran has warned the believers about this upheaval and chaos. Admittedly, the Muslims have weakened in their practices but not in their beliefs. It is also true that a lot more vast infected people are coming into the folds of Islam and their number by the grace of Allah Almighty is increasing with every passing moment. when seen in the realm of religious practices or worships we bear witness to the fact that prayer fasting pilgrimage and zakat have fundamental importance in islamic culture whereas in the west people have practically divorced church going in this ambit muslims keep on striving for improvement even today and the number of muslims one may observe in the mosques is on the rise infinitely however there is no denying the fact that a lot of room for the improvement and inspiring muslims to put in lot of efforts for worship is always there The real clash or confrontation between Islamic and Western culture is of the moral principle. The theory of clash of civilizations is in a sense the theory of victory and defeat of the moral principles. The civilization that is stronger in the realm of morals shall only rule the world. Only that shall lay down the new world order and that very civilization will be there to lead the world because the states come into being and thrive and devise their systems on the basis of moral principles today the west is not ruling the world merely because of its material development and advancement rather there are some moral principles which are strictly followed there though it is true that it has annihilated many moral principles yet the western countries had done this in other countries not in their own ones in the realm of morality simplicity equality trust and honesty justice and fairness are the principles that are being followed in the west here is a brief account of the above mentioned principles simplicity was a distinctive quality and a fundamental value of islamic culture from the pious caliphs to the present day many muslim rulers had followed simplicity 
as their core values as they had the sunnah of the holy prophet peace be upon him before them but alas almost all of our present rulers have divorced this value most of our rulers live in lavish palaces while most rulers in the west live in small homes they travel using even public transport and do not misappropriate the public money that is collected in form of taxes a glaring significant feature of islamic culture is the equality among humans islam neither believes in nor does it sports at all discrimination on the basis of class nation tribe race or color the rich and the poor the master and the slave the arab and the non arab all enjoy equality in islam among muslims even the ruler would stand in the same line as a common muslim while offering prayers <clears throat> However, if someone has a superiority that is only on the basis of piety and righteousness, even a slave can become a ruler if he has the moral of high standard and is pious and self-righteous. In Islam, numerous examples are there in so much a slave dynasty has ruled the Indian subcontinent. No civilization can last long unless it is based on the principle of equality. In Iqbal's word, the distinctive feature of Islamic culture is ek hi saf mein khade ho gaye Mahmud o Ayaz na koi banda raha na koi banda nawaz. Both Mahmud and Ayaz in the same row stood. none as the slave and none as the master stood but regrettably the equality that was the core value of islamic culture is not seen anywhere in today's muslim world many arab states are unwilling to allow non arabs the right to own property in their respective lands in pakistan itself many movements on the basis of regionalism or language are functional the same situation has been prevalent in the west for many years however they have come out of this quagmire and the alliances like nato and organizations like the european parliament are fostering equality in practical terms the standard to which the holy prophet peace be upon him raised the civilization and the instances of the trust honesty and fairness thenceforth had no precedent in the history of mankind it has been noted in tarikh e tibri that when the muslims reached and when the booty was handed over to the in charge of finance people said that they had never seen such precious and valuable things a person asked a muslim if someone of them had retained something with him he was replied that by god if we did not fear allah almighty you would have seen none of these things here people inquired the person who replied about his identity he said i cannot tell because you will praise me later it was revealed that his name was amir and he was belonged to abd kas tribe a history replete with thousands of such glorious instances mirrors the rich culture tradition of islam but regrettably the muslims today are extremely weak and have a lack luster outlook to these rich traditions we deem or think about corruption and looting the public exchequer as a symbol of honor who spends the filthy lucre is praised and saluted everywhere the nation which is devoid of fairness and where corruption becomes a norm and okay to the collective conscience becomes incapacitated to be endowed with the character to lead the world 
in the holy quran and sunnah doing justice has been instructed incessantly as allah almighty says in surah maida i'dilu huwa aqrabu lit taqwa be just that is next to piety at an other place it has been said wa aqsitu inna allah yuhibbul muqsitin and be fair for allah loves those who are fair and just Moreover a hadith of the holy prophet peace be upon him must also be kept in view he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said walaw anna fatima bint muhammad saraqat laqata'tu yadaha by god if fatima bint muhammad alaihi salatu wasallam had committed theft i would have amputated or cut her hand also despite being built on the foundations of above quoted verse and hadith and thousands of inspiring instances from the glorious history of islam the magnificent structure of islamic justice is dilapidated and in shambles or in a condition of great disorder today the justice at social political economics and social levels now seems like a story of by gone days this is so because we have bruised or injured the face of justice with the iron claws of injustice and unfairness in the western countries such transgressions are but seldom these are very minute or short in nature and above all such a justice system has evolved and developed there which is earnestly abided by and respected by all citizens some moral virtues assimilated to by the west culture but not by the muslims have been mentioned above there are simultaneously some moral vices like free mingling of men and women obscenity on the electronic and print media and demise of the family system these are the moral vices the west is the victims of whom today and in this context the western culture is itself on the death bed a culture where men and women can have unrestricted interactions have caused huge problems and has jeopardized the very existence of the family system in the west the situation has aggravated to such an extent that homosexuality lesbianism and gay marriages are being made lawful by various states due to profligacy obscene content and other such vices young boys and girls are becoming adults prematurely this may give rise to sexual disorders in them due to the death of the family system a substantial decrease in population has been witnessed women do not want to restrict themselves by contracting marriages and if they marry giving birth to children becomes a scourge or a type of punishment for them due to this dire problem europe is being depopulated so fast that even very existence of its civilization is in jeopardy Asians are fast exceeding the native populations in these countries. Now we have to make a comparative analysis of Islamic and Western civilization. In Islamic civilization only Allah is worshipped whereas in the western civilizations personal wishes are the idols Islamic civilizations based on divine revelation while European civilization is only based on rationality Muslims believe in the hereafter and the reward and punishment there upon whereas people focus only on the worldly life in the west islam is a complete system of religious practices is in place
while in the west church going has been virtually renounced in islam there are eternal and universal moral principle whereas in the europe moral principles can be altered muslims cannot make a law contradictory to the quran and sunna where in the west parliament is supreme it can do what may want to profligacy is strictly prohibited in islam whereas in europe there is no restriction on obscenity women can join the professions allowed by sharia and not those which are prohibited like acting modeling etc in islam whereas western women can join any field as they want islam elaborate concepts of halal and haram whereas in the europe there is no concept of licit and prohibited pleasing allah is the sole purpose of life for the muslims whereas for the western people the only objective of life is to relish and merry making islamic culture is a great fusion of religion and the world whereas western culture is devoid of such fusion islamic culture caters to bodily as well as spiritual needs whereas western cultures caters only to bodily needs the principles which form very basis of europe's worldly development and well-being were actually the legacy of islamic culture but unfortunately we have abandoned them in other words good morals lost their ground and vices took over it is undoubtedly true that in the degenerating our morals the biggest role is that of the western culture it must also be kept in mind that they insist that if we have to adopt their culture we have to embrace the whole package and there would be no chance of pick and choose that good principles may be adopted by other cultures leaving behind the bad ones to us and this is not only an argument they are actually doing so many foreign funded ngos in muslim countries are aiding and abetting the west in implementing their plans muslims have to save themselves from these enemies of islamic culture the obscene and vulgar advertisement being broadcast in the guise of free media are a part of their conspiracies and only to sell the whole package the western scholars contemplated and made deliberations to consolidate their culture and also of annihilating the islamic culture they would certainly have deduced that if the relation of the muslims will remain stronger with the quran and the last holy prophet peace be upon him they could never be weakened and overpowered similarly if they have the reverence and love for the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam in them and if they would follow the teachings of the last holy prophet peace be upon him then all the moves of west will be rendered futile that's why they gave muslims such an education system where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has not been given due importance the bond of muslims to their prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is not as stronger as it should have been elaborating this fact alama iqbal has said in urdu poetry wo faqa kash ke maut se darta nahi zara روح محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اس کے بدن سے نکال دو فکر عرب کو دے کے فرنگی تخیلات اسلام کو حجاز و یمن سے نکال دو دی مینڈیکینٹ ہوم ڈیتھ کین ناٹ افرائٹ take muhammad's soul from his mold and expedite thy arab thoughts in frankish fancies hue from hijaz and yemen expel the muslim true
in the clash of civilization which we are faced with today the prophethood of the holy prophet peace be upon him is the decisive factor and every person who loves islam and wishes that islam should dominate the world and are actually making strenuous efforts in this regard must have a complete understanding of this fact keeping in view this extreme importance they should review their priorities as well as strategies a famous muslim scholar said everyone must believe the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is still prophet as he was in 6th century we must understand the present social milieu or environment in which we are striving for the practice and dominance of islam it is definitely different and 1400 years away from the prophet's time despite the fact that the efforts being made are continuation and a part and parcel of the same prophetic mission muslims must understand that last prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was not appointed as a prophet by allah for any particular nation or era rather he was sent for whole humanity irrespective of time and space from the 6th century till the 21st and even beyond muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam shall remain as the only prophet the whole mankind today is his follower and belongs to his umma this statement although simple has far reaching connotations or significance it is obligatory then that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam message be continuously delivered in the manner done in his time we should concede or accept that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is still present in his own right amongst us as the prophet and messenger of allah it is so because the divine book he brought is still intact or undamaged his life as model is preserved with the minutest details his deen or the divine way of life is omnipresent and most significantly his followers are spread in all corners of the globe consequently it is in combined on muslims to carry on the mission he launched and executed considering it as the prophetic duty the one bestowed by allah almighty muslims must recognize that to combat the jahiliyyah during the prophet's life the demand for relentless commitment towards his prophethood was of prime importance though the faith in allah comes first and is the essence of islamic way of life yet faith in the prophet is the most pivotal as well as the most decisive belief in allah is the basic premise of all prophets and cradles the purpose of prophethood it is only by admitting a prophet that one can comprehend the concept of allah and go into the total surrender before him this way only that belief and concept of allah is acceptable which is based on the declaration and description provided by the prophet it Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam as Quran is infallible and doubtless word of Allah the prophethood of Muhammad peace be upon him is also beyond any shadow of doubt these have to be taken as granted otherwise there will be no rational and sound interpretation behind the concepts of the lawful and the prohibited duties and voluntary prayers and the punishment and the reward about all these matters it is only the prophetic version that counts practically then the faith and obedience to the prophet is equivalent to the obedience of allah 
and is only source to seek player and proximity before Allah. As Almighty says in the Holy Quran, May Yutir Rasula Fakad Ata Allah, he who obeys the Messenger obey Allah. And in Surah Ali Imran, it has been also said, Qul in kuntum tuhibboon Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibkumullah. If you do love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you. Belief in the prophethood should be given due importance and priority in all our efforts of professing Islam and jihad or striving for the supremacy of Allah's injunctions. Otherwise, mere belief in Allah would become meaningless, let alone the points of agreement on some petty social values like democracy and human rights, etc. Jews believed in one God, Christians too claimed to be the believers of one God, and Quran itself has praised the excellence of their ibadah or worship and ikhlaq or moral dignity. Yet they incurred Allah's wrath simply because denied belief in the prophethood. The belief in prophethood is decisive in perspective that promise of Allah's help, salvation and victory is with the prophets and with those who truly believe in the prophethood, sincerely followed prophetic teachings and becomes the helpers in his mission and struggle for establishing Allah's deen or code of life. As the Quran says, وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ Already has our word been passed before this, to our servant sent us. إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُونَ That they would certainly be assisted. وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ And that our forces, they surely must concur. The eternal struggle of the prophetic mission against the mischief which now has taken the shape of a civilizational conflict between Islam and the West is in fact a struggle for winning over the hearts and minds of people. The winning of hearts would result in the supremacy and dominance of deen. Force can conquer land, acquire money and goods, seize political power, but it cannot win people's mind and hearts. Similarly, an argument can earn sport, but it can never secure commitment, devotion and readiness to brace sacrifices in life. There is only one way to win over the hearts, firm belief in the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, full devotion to him and for his mission, love and reverence for him and full obedience and commitment to follow him in all aspects of life. This is how people's hearts and civilizational wars have always been won in the past and would be in the future. Thus, the biggest objective before us should be to give top priority to the Dawa towards the prophethood of Muhammad peace be upon him. As Alama Iqbal has described this clash into the following words, Stiza kar raha hai azal se taim roz, chirage mustafi se sharare bulahbi. Struggle has continued from eternity till the present day between the lamp of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the spark of Bulahab. In the end, contours of Samuel P. Huntington's theory, clash of civilizations are being presented so that the students may benefit from. Clash of Civilization is an international theory proposed by an American political scientist Samuel P. Huntington. The theory then developed in 1993 Foreign Affairs article titled The Clash of Civilizations. The phrase itself was earlier used by Bernard Levice in an article. Huntington later expanded his thesis in a 1996 book entitled The Clash of Civilizations and the Remarking of the World Order. In an article published in Foreign Affairs, Huntington writes, 
it is my hypothesis that the fundamental source of conflict in this new world order will not be primarily ideological or primarily economic. The great divisions among humankind and the dominating source of conflict will be cultural. Nation states will remain the most powerful actors in world affairs, but the principal conflict of global politics will occur between nations and groups of different civilization. The clash of civilizations will dominate global politics. The fault lines between civilizations will be the battle lines of the future.